Hello and welcome to the show. We have a fabulous lineup of guests to help you wake up your wow. It's time to wake up your wow with your host, international award winning speaker, Kath Vincent. How often do you wake up on a Monday morning and look forward to what you're going to do for the day? Now, it doesn't matter whether you're employed, you're in business, or you're staying at home, but really, do you love what you do? We're going to be speaking to some really interesting people who've got some quite cool jobs. And I promise you, this show will be magic, quite literally, because we have magician Mick Peck in the house. And we have international best-selling author and career consultant, Tom O'Neill in the house. And we have Jesse Wilde of Wild Records Recording Studios in the house. He's going to be presenting the latest talent from his recording studio. But first, let's meet Mark Cummings from Human Rhythms and his drums. So Mark, welcome. Thanks for being on the show. Tell me about drumming. I'm not playing it. I am playing it. Okay. woken up our oh, wow so tell me is this really what you do for a job it is what I do for a job <laughs> I want your job <laughs> I want your job how on earth did you get into drumming this was something that I found a number of years ago um, at a conference uh, where it was going nowhere yeah. three days a day and a half in a whole lot of us were going to be going home yeah. a boring conference a boring we've conference. all been to a boring some conference around, haven't we <laughs> Inside the conference room, just after lunch, we heard just a little rhythm being played. We thought, oh, well, hang around and watch that. that. That little event, which was something like this, turned that conference on its head in about half an hour. Wow. And we stayed for the first time for, for, for just the conference. Now, seven years later, I had a team that I wanted to do something with. I couldn't find this going on here. So we started. Wow. So we've been going there for seven years. And I tell you, it's so invigorating. I'm still a bit out of breath. <laughs> Sitting here going, oh, I hope he keeps talking. <laughs> so you've been doing it for seven years yeah. and you've got a whole team of people now. Mm -hmm. And what's the biggest number of people you can have drumming at any given time? Our biggest is 700. Wow. 700. Wow, 700 people. So you've got 700 drums, you bring those to a conference and you have 700 people mm -hmm. drumming at once. Yeah. Wow, well we've got a dozen people in the studio here who should be working, actually, should be working. I look up, they're all drumming. They were working. They <laughs> I, were. Hope, I hope someone has filmed this. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, there's more to it than drumming, isn't there? Yeah, there is. I mean, this is not about, not about music. It's not about um, performance. It's not about how good you are, how good I am. Not that good anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is about uh, what happens when you play. Yeah. It's about a connection. It's about teamwork. And I hesitate to use the word team building. Yeah. Uh, it is about teamwork. It's an experience in what you can do, what a group can achieve when they decide to work together, yeah. when they decide to play. And fundamentally in teams, and this is the boring business bit, in, in people have to make a decision to actually get involved. Yeah. Otherwise the team won't work and you can do all the team building you like, but if that fundamental decision has not been made, 
it won't happen. What we do in this environment is people play. They've given, they actually make the decision to play like these people here did today yeah. <laughs> without really knowing why. They just do it and they get a feeling for what it's like to work in a group and to do their part to, to uplift the group's outcome. Do you ever have people who really think, oh, look, I'm too cool to play the drama. I don't, I don't really want to get involved in this. We do. <laughs> 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 you have, you get, you, you get the, or the extremes of cool. Yeah. You get the, the, the one end is, uh, I am so cool, I'm going to be the best in the entire group. <laughs> yeah. and, they, and they show off. And Overachievers. <laughs> they do. But, but we, we, we deal with those also because, uh, again, many events uh, where we go around the room and we get each individual to play something. The yeah. show off yeah. uh, will often go, oh, this is my time to shine. And they go berserk. Yeah. Um, so we take their big drum off them and give them a little one. <laughs> <laughs> I got a big one, but, thank but, you Mark. But thank they love you. it, because they, like they get the centre of attention, but it also puts, some, puts a, a bit of perspective on it too. Yeah. But you also get people who, we had one guy who was in the middle of a small group, he didn't want to play, he actually looked at me in the front of the room and did this, crossed his arms, crossed his legs and said, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Fine. I had 40 other people to worry about in the group. Kept playing, I was watching him right here, I could just see. A little the foot tap. What's going on? Uh -huh. right? and then, Shoulder sway. And then he picked up a pen and was <laughs> tapping on the glass. And then he went, oh, okay. <laughs> picked up the drum and started playing. Yeah. Um, and that's, again, that's a drum circle uh, in a team environment won't change the team. Uh, well, not, any, not one will, but anyone can mm -hmm. change the team. But what it does do, it highlights the various p uh, people's roles within the, within the team. Mm -hmm. I guess it's a metaphor for life, really. You only get out what you're willing to, to yeah. put in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is a, a, a come back to, uh, in a lot of, uh, in, in life, in business, in drum circles, there are many things that make, make, make them work, many things that make team work, many things that make you know, life work. But for me, there are three things we talk about a lot uh, and we get great feedback from. And the first one is that decision to play yeah. that I mentioned Sh earlier on. Showing up. If you make that decision, you cross the threshold, it ceases to be about you and more about what you're doing, more about your impact on the group. Uh, the second one is no dare, no flair. Uh, mm. You've got to be allowed to make mistakes. And in, this, in a drum environment, no, nobody gets it right, yeah. it, but, but it is what it is. But when you, when you make that mistake where you think, I've played something that's, oh, that didn't quite work, yeah. own it. Yeah. Do something about I it. I own it. I mm. tell you what, you play by the cuts and <laughs> don't yeah. play my bit. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the third one is, is a strong one and my personal favourite is passion rules. Yeah. You bring the passion to the table. Nobody uh, can, can go, you, you are now passionate. Yeah. Uh, you've got to bring it. You've yeah. got to find a way of getting it out there. So the advice from Mark, take a look in the mirror and don't forget <laughs> to wake up that passion. That really helped to wake up our wow. Can, we, can we do a bit more before you go? Sure. <laughs> <Can we? laughs> Go. You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Welcome. Did you enjoy the drumming? Oh, the drumming was fantastic. <laughs> Surprised how much rhythm I thought I actually had. It's I nice. look up, career consultants go, ooh. Yeah, woo <laughs> but listen, not everyone can do drumming for a living. Not everyone probably has that passion for what they do. What, what advice would you give to people who, who perhaps don't feel that way? It's amazing. Uh, there's, there was a statistic from the Australasian Institute of Management a couple of years ago saying that 60% of Kiwis, employed Kiwis, hate or dislike their job. That's like 1.1 million people who wow. wake up on Monday and go, ooh, yeah. you know. And, and for me, it's about finding that passion, yeah. finding that passion for what you want to do yeah. and be that person that you want to be. It, it's, it's amazing. So many people just wake up and go, and go to work and they live for the weekends. Yeah. But there's another five days that we have as well yeah. to and try they, and live. And they do that future. for years on end. Oh, for, for yeah. their entire life. Yeah. Amazing. But people will say, look, you know, I can't just do what I love because maybe, you know, I need to pay the bills, I've got to pay the mortgage, I've got a family to look after. 
you know, what can you say to them? Uh, and that is so many people. They really want to go and do something, do something different, reach yeah. their potential, whatever it is, but they're just too too terrified to. And uh, I, I suppose I've got a, a process, um, uh, plan, research, go. And really plan is, is firstly thinking, well, what is it that I want to do? What is it, who do I want to be? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we spend more time planning an overseas holiday or planning our wedding day than we do planning our life or mm -hmm. our career. Uh, for so many people and so firstly just really asking family and friends uh, you know what are the things I'm passionate about what are the things I'm good at and start to firstly figure out where you fit and where you know where would be something that you would love so the first step is plan That's and right. it's it's really I guess what you're saying is it's about actually putting your hand up and saying this is what I want to do absolutely and really just taking some time out of your life yeah. turn off the TV turn off the Xbox whatever it is and saying what is it I want to do? Investing. There's lots of amazing, amazing uh, tools online. There's one called CareerQuest, which is actually a government website. Um, just Google CareerQuest and it'll come up with a, a test you could do. And it sort of gives you, at the end of it, a whole bunch of jobs based on your passions, not what you're good at. And historically, my background psychology and career management, and in the old days, would do it based on what you're good at. A lot of the time what you're good at is not what you're passionate about. Mm, that's an so, interesting yeah, distinction. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so really doing it based on what you're good at, if you're great with numbers, oh, you'd be an accountant. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if being an accountant's not your passion, you're only going to be, you know, you're going to be working your full potential in terms of your job. But if I really believe if you're really passionate about something and you're not so good at it at the start, because you're passionate, over time you will become one of the best in the industry mm -hmm. just because it's something that's genuinely in you and you have that real passion for. So what you're saying is that passion will take you further than skill alone? Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. Because passion, put it, put it this way, let's say you're working in a company and um, you're in a job you don't really like yeah. and you have a 5 out of 10 day. Yeah. Now actually, because you can't really, you know, don't really enjoy the company, don't enjoy the industry, you end up having a three out of ten day. Mm. If you have a three out of ten day, you're actually having a zero out of ten day. Yeah. Conversely, if you're operating in your passion, you're doing something you really love, you know, you have a five out of ten day, you're actually having a seven out of ten day because you're operating in your passion. That passion gives you that buffer that when the days are a bit tough, a bit hard, not that enjoyable. Yeah. Working for Greenpeace or working in, you know, working with animals or being an HR consultant, whatever it is, yeah. that will give you that buffer to keep, you know, keep your focus long term yeah. while everyone else sort of drops away. What about the problem that actually by the time you realise that you're having three out of ten days or naught out of ten days, you actually don't have the energy to break out? That's a great question. I think it comes to an end of the day, how much do you want it? Yeah. You know, you can sit down and go, well, um, you know, I'm too tired, I don't have this energy, I don't have that, da 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 da. Yeah. But, I mean, you look at, you look at so many people in this, this world who have managed to break out of really, really terrible circumstances or destitute circumstances because they just stopped and, you know, took some time out. I'm not saying you, you spend $10,000 and go and do a, you know, fantastic, you know, life changing trip. What I'm saying is you take half an hour out and write down a list of 10 things you enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. You know, a bucket list, write a bucket list. Whatever it is, just start to do these things that may take 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you know, pour yourself a big tea or coffee and, uh, you know, just invest and then you'll find over time these little things will start to mount up. Okay, so that's actually a very tangible tip that someone can take home. Take half an hour out, write down 10 things that you, you're good at or you yeah. enjoy. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Tom. That's awesome. Real pleasure. Thanks. So welcome. Thanks for coming in, Beth. Kath, good to see you. Congratulations <laughs> on the new show. Lovely set you've got here. We've got some, uh, got some birds in the background there. Yeah. Look, looks, looks fantastic. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm actually a bit nervous about you being here. You should be. I'm worried you're going to do magic, but I see that you haven't brought anything with you, so I'm kind of relieved. Well, I've got pockets. You never know what a magician has in their pockets. So. But listen, you must love your job. I do. Yeah. It's, it's more fun than uh, working in an, in, in an office. Not so fun as banging a drum, possibly, but no, it's, 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 it's good fun. <laughs> Have you ever had a job that you hated? I did. I had a job that I hated for a while. Well, not, not, not hated, but it was a, a nine-to-five job, and yeah. that's okay, but it um, wasn't for me. Yeah. So. so how did you get into magic? I got into magic. I was about six or seven years old, and I saw David Copperfield vanish oh. into the Bermuda Triangle, and I thought, oh... That's a good career move. So. You're not, you're not going to make me vanish to say, are you? <laughs> not today, no. Bring me back. I'll do it. <laughs> so, so you grew up basically doing magic? I did, yes. I used to annoy my parents, annoy my brothers with uh, 
silly little contracts and now I get paid to annoy people, so it's good. Brilliant, okay. And what what's a bad day for you? Do you have bad days in your job? A bad day would be a room full of screaming kids all hyped up on sugar, running around, and uh, well that's not so bad, but the parents all at the back chatting, uh, then you're just a, a paid babysitter really, but yeah. uh, that's that's few and far between. Normally, normally it's good, normally it's good. And what about your best day? Best day, you walk in, you don't know anyone, at the end of a show, you're friends with everyone, they come up, they say that was a great show, take, you, take, you, you take people back to childhood, so that's that's a nice experience. Actually, yeah, I, it's an interesting thing about magic. What, what do you think is so compelling about it? Well, I think normally we go through life and we don't really have that many surprises. I mean, think back to when you're a child, basically everything's magic, you yeah. know, you don't, you don't know how the world works, but yeah. you grow up and you, I think people lose that, lose that, um, that feeling of what it's like to be a, a, a child. So magic magic brings that back, so it's nice. Yeah, and I guess it's everything's possible, isn't it? Of course it is. Once, yeah. once you're grown up, it's a bit more about necessity sometimes yes. than possibility. All right, so have you got some magic that you can do for us today? No, sorry. <laughs> you're worse than the drum guy. <laughs> Too many surprises he was today. Good, the drummer guy, wasn't he? He's good. He's brilliant. Yeah. I love it. Would you like to see a piece of magic there, I Kath? really would. Okay, deck of cards, all different, all mixed. Oh, yes. Say yes. Say yes. Okay. Me, yeah. In fact, you can shuffle them up, Kath. People Ooh. think that I cheat. Okay. Oh, no. I would have practiced this if I'd known. <laughs> All very professional. Um, Good stuff. Wonderful. So what I want you to do, Kath, reach in there and take out any card you want. Doesn't matter if I see it. Makes my job easier. Hold it up. Show the camera. Show all the viewers Which at home. Which camera am I showing? This one? Are we good? All right, so Kath, what I want you to do, take the pen and big letters so everyone can see. Can you please write your name on there, big letters, so everyone can see, okay? And it doesn't matter if you've seen this. That's fine. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. A trusting okay. soul. Very good. Okay. okay. After you've done that, I'll take back the pen and show everyone your name on there. You're writing. Let's get a close-up. Good stuff. Now, be honest with me, Kath. How many cards have you written on today? None. Here's a clue. Oh, one. Just, just, just the one, okay? <laughs> I've got attention span <laughs> That's fine. Over now. Focus. All right, have some more okay, coffee. Okay. All right. Now, uh, there's, there's, uh, there's only one of these cards in the world, which is why I had you sign your name on there. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the signature is dry, it doesn't come off, and your card goes roughly into the middle of the deck. Now, Kath, it stays there until I do the secret move. Yeah. Just a snap, and then like an elevator, one card jumps back up to the top. Now, you didn't know what to look for, I'll do it again, okay? Very slowly, very fairly. This time, I'll put it even deeper down. It stays there until I do the secret move, just a snap, and then it jumps to the top, all by itself. Any questions? Yeah, how the hell did you do that? Please tell me. Should I do it one more time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slow motion, okay. okay. So it definitely does go in the middle. Some people think I cheat. Would yeah. you say that that was roughly the middle there, Kath? Yeah. In fact, I'll even spread them out so everyone can see it really does go in there. Because magicians don't do it again because no, they, they don't. Looking. No, you, you do it again, yeah. game's over. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it really does go in there. Yeah, um, you can you can see the uh, the uh, the the writing on there. Yeah. Okay. And uh, some some people think that maybe I've got a whole deck of twos, which is why I had you put your name on there. Okay. So it goes in the middle of these ones. These ones now go in the middle of those ones. So now it's in the middle of the middle. It's not on the bottom. It's not on the top because I have not done the secret move. I do the secret move, just a snap, and then like an elevator, Kath, one car jumps to the top. That's an applause cue in the studio. <laughs> All right. Make, make, sure, make sure we mic that applause up. All right. Did you see the concentration on my face? I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to catch him out. I'm going to catch him out. And are you ready for the big finish there, Kath? I am. Okay, hold out your hand flat like a little table. This time your card goes on here. These ones go on the top. You snap your fingers. You turn over the top card. I'm not going to touch it. Show the camera. Oh, what do you think? It's just like Destiny Church. Okay. So what was that one then? I don't know. Hard to say. I don't know if I like magic. It's stressing me. Well, do it like me. Do, two, do 200 shows a year. You'll hate it. That's good. That's brilliant. But listen, how do you learn this stuff? Uh, well, there's, there's, there's two parts to magic. Um, the first part is the trick. Yeah. The second part is making it entertaining, making people care about it, yeah. uh, having people take you seriously yeah. is another big one, especially in New Zealand. Oh, did I say that out loud? Oh, okay. Um, so the f first part is learning a trick. Any, anyone can learn a trick out of a book, yeah. out of a DVD, even on YouTube. Uh, but learning how to be an entertainer is slightly harder, I think. that That's that's what really takes the time. So. But where are the answers? Because magicians are always very cagey about, oh, you know, you nobody will ever tell you how to do a trick. No. Well, there are magicians in, in New Zealand, and mm -hmm. if, if you're friends with a magician, and if they take you seriously, and if uh -huh. they know that you respect magic, uh -huh. um, and that you're not going to go around telling secrets, then they, they will I teach you. I won't tell. I won't mm. tell. Teach me one. Will you teach me one? No. <laughs> No way. I, tell you, I couldn't even get him to tell me what trick he was going to do today. No, I'm very cagey. <laughs> have you got more stuff? I have got more stuff. Go on, do some more stuff. 
More stuff? More stuff. Okay. Do you want some more stuff? All right. Let's do some more stuff. Okay, the camera's going to have to come in nice and close because on the back of this deck of cards, there's a little drawing of me. Can you see the little man on there, Kath? Little, yes. little drawing of me. Cute. He's been on a diet. So what I want you to do is to think of any card in the deck. Now, I've got them all here, so just think of any one you want. Now, don't think of a common one like the Ace of Spades or the Queen of Hearts. Think of one that I would never uh, guess. You're hypnotising me. Now, Did all I can think of is those cards. <laughs> all right, think, think of one that I would never guess. Okay. Have you got one? Yeah. Would you like to change your mind? No. Happy with the mind you have? All the old gags are coming out, it's terrible. Okay, Kath, which, which card are you thinking of, if you can tell me? Are you sure I can tell you? Yes, please. Six of diamonds. Six of diamonds. Now, I want to be very fair, uh, Kath. You can stay with these six of diamonds, yeah. or you can change your mind and think of a different card. Right. What are you going to do? You want me to tell you? Yes, please. <laughs> six of diamonds. Six of diamonds. Is yeah. that your final answer? That's my final answer. Do you want to phone a friend? Uh, no. no. Okay. So we'll take out the six. Now, Kath, you could have thought of any card in the deck, but you thought of the six of diamonds, okay? Now, one thing I didn't say is that little man, he's not actually just drawn on the back of one card. He's actually drawn on the back of every single card. But in every single picture, he is slightly different. Kath, can you see his hand moving up there? He's, oh, yeah. Okay. So what I want everyone to do is to look at the back of the cards there. Let's get a nice... Oh, how professional. Okay. <laughs> so what I want everyone to do is to look at the back of the cards and watch. He's reaching up. He's taking off his hat, he's reaching inside, and he's going to pull out a card. Not just any card, Kath, but it's actually the card you were thinking of, the Six of Diamonds. One more time, he reaches in, and he pulls out the Six of Diamonds, the one that you were <laughs> merely thinking of, and even I don't know how that one looks. That is the coolest. I, you know, I had heaps of questions here, and they've all gone completely out of they my have, head. That's I'm good. Going, how I'm going, did he do I can that? go home, do my lawn. That's the only question I have. How did you do that? Stay afterwards and tell me, okay? Okay. Whisper. For a small thing. Whisper. Okay. That was awesome, Mick. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you, Kath. Lovely to be here. And until we meet again, everyone stay bright, do right, don't get tight or high as a kite. Try not to fight, stay home at night, keep out of sight, and you'll be all right. Kath, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>me a bit about the talent, the musical talent that's coming through Wild Records at the moment. Well the studio has always been very strongly influenced by singer-songwriters coming in and uh, we have a lot of bands as well but singer-songwriters are my favourite, being a singer-songwriter myself. And who's on the show today? Today we have uh, one of my favourite artists, a guy named Colin Bulls and he's from Cardiff in Wales. And how did you meet? I first met Colin um, at a sing a song, no it was actually a open mic night event yeah. in uh, Ponsonby. When Colin came up the entire room went quiet and Colin played some beautiful songs, a finger picking style I've, like I've never seen before wow. and I was instantly drawn and thought I need to record this guy. Brilliant, well let's hear from Colin. <laughs> side of the wrong side And all these sticks and stones and colours of another shade of tone For all these vivid things Your girl told me that it seems to be but make-believe for some Be the right side of the wrong side And I found allies and acquaintances that sorrow into Guys to meet us there, smiling face and shoe soles worn. Yeah, 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 we played every day, picking up along the way.
Sometimes to not know where the road is going Hold something deeper than the valley's driving me Blue skies between the rain clouds to and fro and There's always blue skies on the hillside far from me Be the right side of the wrong side And all these sticks and stones that I picked up along a beaten track Remain a part to see Now that don't seem fair to me But it may seem not fair to some Yeah, 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 the radio would play Singing songs along the way from our way mm, yeah 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 we played every day pick it up long way It's beautiful. So Colin's recording in your studio right now. He certainly is. And I'd like to say that style of finger picking is extremely hard to play. It's really complicated looking. I'm not a guitar player, but I'm going, whoa, how is he doing all that? Yeah, and to play and sing. I actually learnt one of his songs a while ago and it took me months just to perfect that finger picking style. And I've been playing guitar for years. So to do that and sing, it's an incredible talent. And here he is, Colin, join us. Thank you so much. That was absolutely, that just got right inside my chest cover too. It's beautiful. Well, thanks for having me along. It's been uh, great. So listen, how did you learn that style of guitar? Um, well, I first picked up guitar because I really liked the, the style of an acoustic guitar and, and the artists that I sort of w was listening to at the time, sort of iron and wine and stuff. They were um, finger picking artists yeah. and so that's the sort of stuff that I wanted to learn to play, and so that's what drew me to it, basically. And you wrote that song? I did write that song, yeah. I wrote that when I first got here. Um, and it's, it's just all about traveling around New Zealand and, yeah, just meeting the people that you meet and just yeah. having fun, basically. It has got that feel. It just feels like a road trip to me. I just want to get in the van <laughs> right now and take off. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank, no, you're welcome. But, uh, yeah, those, the songs that I write, everyone kind of takes me back to that place. It's, I'm, I'm useless at taking ph photographs, so I write songs and it kind of just takes me back to the place that I'm thinking about, basically. Wow, I love that idea that you would <laughs> write a song instead of taking a photograph. So you must have lots of songs from everywhere you've been. I do, yeah. Um, mainly from Wales and from, um, from New Zealand mainly, but uh, yeah, they all kind of take you back to a place place in your past and yeah it's it's really good well your style is very chill out style and it's been beautiful to share with us today thank you so much yeah, thanks for having me. and thanks to jesse as well jesse will be back with us next week because each week we're going to be featuring beautiful music from up and coming artists my thanks also to my other special guests to mark to nick and to tom and until next week don't forget to wake up your life.